Hey everybody, Darren here with Renaissance Coders, and today we're going to talk about hash tables as we continue the intermediate series in C-sharp. Hash tables are a collection of key value pairs, where the key is like the index within a list, and the value is the value that you would get from indexing that list. Uh, so let's start off by creating a hash table. We need to include using system.collections and then we can say uh, static hash table. I'm using static because I'm working out of a console project in Xamarin Studio. Uh, so of course this doesn't have to be static depending on your environment. So static hash table uh, user info hash we'll call. What we're going to do is create some user IDs and user names. Uh, so user info hash should be equal to a new hash table. We're going to talk about how to add, remove, set, loop through, and get elements from the user info hash in this tutorial. Let's start off with adding elements. So to add an element, let's start off by looping through about 10 times. In the loop, what we want to do is say user info hash dot add. The first parameter and the second parameter are both, key, uh, both object types. But the first parameter is the key, and the second parameter is the value. So the key for us will be i, and the value will be a string for username, which will be user, and concatenated off of that string user is going to be i. Now let's talk about removing. So if we want to remove from a hash table, the first thing we want to do is check to see if the key exists where we're trying to remove it. So we can say if user info hash dot contains key. And let's say we want to remove the key at zero. If user info hash has a key at zero, then we can remove that. So we can say user info hash dot remove. And you can see the parameter it's looking for is an object key. So we remove zero. Now remember, we're removing zero because we defined our key as an integer at this point. Because we're looping through int i is equal to zero, i is less than 10, so i is an integer here. Keep in mind that with a hash table, i or the key value can be any object value, even your own custom types. Next, let's talk about how we can set values in our info hash. So we can say setting. So to set a value, we just need to make sure the key exists where we're trying to set. So we can say if user info hash dot contains key. This time we want to modify the key at one. Or we want to modify the value where the key is equal to one. So similar to how you might do it with a list or an array, we can say user info hash at one is equal to we can say a new string value. We can say replacement name. Next, let's talk about how to loop through our hash table. And when we loop through our hash table, we're looking to get the key and the value at each entry. So looping. First, we can say for each dictionary entry, because the hash table is based off of a dictionary. That's why this is so easy for us to do. For each dictionary entry entry in user info hash, which is our hash table name, we can write a console.write line statement that gives us the key uh, and the value at each entry. So let's take a moment to run this and see what we get. Now, as you can see, we removed the element at zero and we renamed the element at one. So key at zero isn't showing up here and the key at one, it has a new value of replacement name. All of the other keys are named based on how we named them in the loop at the beginning of this tutorial. Now, the next thing to talk about is how to access uh, elements within our hash table. And this is really where the hash table shines in comparison to other collection systems. So if you're wondering why you should use a hash table, the answer is 
if you're ever frequently retrieving objects from your collection and you have a large collection, a hash table is always going to be constant time. Now I'm going to add some code to show you that this is actually true. So first I want to create a list. So I'm going to add system.collections.generic. And my list is going to be of a custom type. That custom type is going to be user info. And the user info is going to have an ID and a name, similar to how the hash table is set up for us. So I'm going to create a new struct called user info. So here's our new struct, and this is going to be the type for our list. We have an integer that holds the user ID and a string that holds the username. Our constructor, our constructor is used to build uh, the user ID and the username. So now I just need to create a list of that type. So now that my user info list exists, I'm going to go through the process of adding elements, and I'll do it in the exact same way that I did here. So I'll say, or uh, a very similar way that I did here. So user info list dot add, but this time I'm going to use a custom type. So I'll say, uh, what we want to add is a new user info. The user info uh, constructor takes an integer for ID and a string for name. So I'll say I user string concatenate I just like that. Now to show that this is actually uh, a much different collection with accessing objects uh, performance wise, we need to use a very large collection. So we're going to use 4 million. We're going to use 4 million objects. And since we're using this many objects, I want to make sure that I comment out my loop because this will try to loop through 4 million objects and that can take a lot of time. Now we're talking about access. So how am I actually going to run this experiment to show you that accessing elements in a hash table is much faster than accessing them in a list. Well, we're going to use a stopwatch to keep track of time, and we're going to use a random value to access a random value from 3 million to 4 million within our two collections. So since I'm using a stopwatch, I need to go up to the top first and add a using statement for system.diagnostics. And I'll create my static stopwatch call that SW and then I'll say SW is equal to a new stopwatch up here. This is going to keep track of the time of our algorithms. So I want to keep track of a random value. So I'm going to create a new random generator, random, random user gen equals new random. And I'll have an integer that is random. That integer is going to be called uh, random user and I'll initialize that to negative one. For my time, I want to say sw.start, and I'll keep track of a float for start time. That'll be the start time for our algorithm, a float for end time, and a float for delta time, which is going to be end time minus start time. Now I'm going to create a loop that gives us five good cycles of accessing different elements from a hash table and a list, and I'm going to set it up in a way that outputs the completion time for both of those algorithms. Okay, so I basically have it set up to where all we need to do is add the access logic for the list and the access logic from the hash table. And after I do that, we can run this and we can actually see which one is actually faster. Now notice that I'm pulling a value from 3 million to 4 million. Uh, that's going to make sure that we get a high value from our list because the list is a linear search and it's going to emphasize how much slower the list is from the uh, hash table. 
Now accessing from a list is going to require an external method uh, where I'm actually looping through and finding the ID uh, within the list. So let's go ahead and create that external method. So I have this method get user from list. I basically have to loop through uh, linearly the list until I find the user ID that I'm looking for from this parameter. Once I find that user ID, I can return the user info list uh, directly. So I'm going to call that up here. So the access from the list is going to look like this. Username, which is defined right up here, is going to be equal to get user from list. And we're going to pass in the ID, the random ID, random user, just like that. So that's the access for the list. The access from the hash table is going to be much sim simpler. All we need to do is say username is equal to the string uh, cast of user info hash at the index of the key or the index of random user. Now when I run this, we should be able to see that the the list access is much slower than the hash access. So let's see if that's true. All right, so we can see that at each cycle, the same user is being retrieved. So we know that that's working, but we can see that every time we retrieve from the list, it takes much slower. Um, it takes much more time to retrieve, so the, the list access is much slower. And at all points, even though we have 4 million objects in our hash table, it's still registering as 0 milliseconds, which means that it's close to constant time. So you can see from this, if you're ever working with collections that are very large, and you have to have frequent access to elements within them, then using a hash table is probably going to be a safe bet. All right, everybody, that's all I have on the hash table tutorial. If you want to learn more C Sharp, we have some beginner tutorials. Otherwise, we're going to keep going forward with the intermediate level tutorials. We also have game development tutorials uh, and artificial intelligence. We have editor scripting for Unity 3D. We have character controllers. Uh, we have a lot of good content out there. So go ahead and check our channel out if you haven't yet. Share it with your friends. It really helps us out a lot. Uh, and, you know, whatever videos you're liking, uh, just drop a like on those videos because the more likes we get on a certain topic, we're probably just going to keep doing videos on that topic. We want to put content out that you guys like. So let us know what you like by leaving a, a, a like for us on the video. And uh, that's all I have. So I'll see you all in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.